Good morning, Church of the Living God, brothers and sisters. Hello. Hi. Well, today, brethren, got a video here that I, uh, I'd like us to engage in. Um, I'm going to be looking at Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8. So please go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures and go with me into Amos chapter 8. And for this video, I'm going to be using two sets of scriptures. And uh, before we begin, very quickly, I want, I'd like to um, make mention, um, remember to pray for one another, brethren. Always keep one another in your prayers. Um, uh, we are praying, uh, for example, a brother from uh, Croatia has requested prayer for a um, new convert. We are praying for you and for that, dear brother, and also for um, the two Alexanders, uh, always in our prayers. Um, we, we know of three brethren who are named Alexander. <laughs> um, uh, two are, you know, that we keep in prayer. And of course, our beloved brother, our dear friend, Brother Alexander Hartley, always praying for him. And uh, like I said, um, just remember, especially in the times that we are in right now, pray for one another, brethren. Spend time in prayer for one another. Don't forget that and do not neglect that. Okay, but without further ado, let's get to Amos chapter 8. I've been working on this for a little while, and with the, um, with what was the holiday that was yesterday. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Amos chapter 8, we're going to read, the, uh, we're going to go through this whole chapter, and we're going to look at corresponding verses along the way, of course. Amos chapter 8, we will read, begin with verses 1 on to verse 2. Thus hath the Lord God shewed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. Jeremiah chapter 24, verses 1 on to verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 24, verses 1 on to verse 3. Of course, you are expected to follow along, and I will speak unto you as though you are following along in the authorized version of the Scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 24, verses 1 on to verse 3. The Lord shewed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. Now, right, right away you say, see here, two baskets, but over here in Amos chapter 8, a singular basket, right? We'll get a little bit more on that as we continue. But summer fruit, figs are a summer fruit, don't you know? Just, just so you are aware, okay? Let's continue. The Lord shewed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. After that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths, from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. Now, pay attention to this. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. And the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Naughty figs. Naughty. Hmm. Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, 
figs. The good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Micah. Micah chapter 7. Up, 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 up. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 4. Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, mm. as the great gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. The good man is perished out of the earth. Aha, a clue. Hold your uh, place right there. Uh, the good man is perished out of the earth. And when you go to uh, Amos chapter 8, verse 2, and he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. Meaning that he's going to judge his people. Okay, but where it says a basket, and as we looked at Jeremiah, there were two baskets, one good and the one evil, a basket of naughty figs. So we can reasonably <laughs> assume that the singular basket in Amos chapter 8 is referring on to what? Those naughty Figs, yes? Let's continue. Verse 2 in uh, Micah chapter 7. The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net. That they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh, and the judge asketh for a reward. And the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire. So they wrap it up. The best of them is as a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh. Now shall be their perplexity. Mmm, mmm. Now go to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verses 18. Can't see my own writing. On to verse 22. Matthew chapter 21, verses 18. On to verse 22. Now, in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, or verily I say unto you, excuse me, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do that which is done into the fig tree, but also ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, Believing, you shall receive. Now, the fig tree. The fig tree is always synonymous with Israel. And those who are replacement theology like to come to this and say that Jesus, when he cursed the fig tree, meaning that he cursed Israel and that there will be no fruit coming from Israel henceforth and forever. Plus that meaning that replacement theology, which is what Catholicism teaches. And that one weirdo guy, um, Andersnake, 
That was his big thing. I remember him, uh, Brother Brian talked about how he would come to um, the thing of the fig tree and say that Israel is done with and that the church has replaced Israel. <laughs> That's insanity. No. Because when you look at this, did all the fig trees wither away? No. Just that specific one. And when you look in verse 21, Verily I say to you, I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say, if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And here's a, a verse that a lot of these uh, charismatic um, prosperity people uh, like to misuse. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. <clears throat> now hold your place here and go to uh, Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 4. The mountain. The mountain. <clears throat> the mountain. Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. Verse. <clears throat> ah, let's read verses 5 on to verse 9. Verses 5 on to verse 9 in Zechariah chapter 4. Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Now go back to Matthew chapter 21, and let's continue now for a little bit more on to verse 27. And when he was, uh, Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 on to verse 27 now. You can also read the uh, um, a variation of this in Mark chapter 11, verses 12 on to verse 33. We're not going to go there, but we're going to stay here because we're going to see this, okay? Check this out. And when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came on to him as he was teaching and said, Now, get a load of this. By what authority dost thou, doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? Now, remember how we looked at in Jeremiah about the two baskets, the good figs and the naughty, evil figs? Remember? Remember that? The two baskets of figs, and here in Amos, it's only talking about one, ba uh, one basket of figs. Okay? And verse 23 here in Matthew chapter 21, <laughs> what is this? The chief priests and elders of the people are saying to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> by what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? Now, it... Uh, it is said to hear within the scriptures that when Christ has come, they will not know from whence he is. Okay? Hence, 
these people obviously did not know their father, their God, their Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, right in front of them. Okay? They were naughty fakes. They were blind. They could not see. So his question here, knowing all things, <laughs> the baptism of John, whence was it, from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people. For all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Why wouldn't he? Because look at their reasoning. Look at their reasoning. Had he had told them the truth, which he proved through signs and wonders, because the Jews require a sign, remember, okay? And all the miracles that he did, he proved himself to be their Messiah, their God, their Father, their promised Savior, the Son of David, King of the Jews, okay? He proved that unto them. But see, his question revealed unto them shows us what? That they were blind. And their reasoning shows us that even if he had told them, <laughs> because right here, verse 25, the baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And these are the people that should have known these things. Hence, the naughty figs. In Amos chapter 8, verse 2, And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A basket of summer fruit, a singular basket. Then said he, Then said the Lord unto me, The end has come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And see, in verse 21, where he says, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do that, do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. I'm going to notice this. I want, you, I want you to see this. Okay? Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, very familiar verses, a very familiar portion of scripture this ought to be for you. But with this context of the fig tree, Luke chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 14. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Remember what we just looked at in Matthew chapter 21 about if you have faith and believe uh, what you, uh, about what will you, not only will you do what is done to the fig tree, but you'll say unto this mountain. Okay. And then we saw in Zechariah, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord about what is this mountain? Check this out. Saying, there was in the city a judge. Now, this is very familiar for, onto you, if this ought to be, but. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, the Jews, Israel? Okay, in this context, elect. Okay, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Doctrinally, still the Old Testament, under the law, 
which is faith and works, eternal security was not available during the dispensation of the law. Okay? And shall not God avenge his own elect, in context to Jews, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Shall he find faith on the earth when the Son of Man cometh? There will be faith, yes, and a small remnant that have to keep the commandments of God and the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, remember, it is faith and works. You can't take that mark of the beast. Okay? Can't do it. Or else you go straight to hell. Okay? Let's continue this. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised other. Remember the two baskets. And remember that in Amos here, it's one basket. Which one is he referring to? It, it describes itself within the context of verse 2 in Amos chapter 8. But let's continue. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee. Pharisee, tradition over scripture. Catholic. <clears throat> Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Remember the rich young ruler? Goes to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, uh, the King of the Jews, uh, says, Good Master. Where the blind guy that was begging said, Jesus, thou son of David. Okay. One basket, good. The other basket, naughty. That naughty basket. Stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Verse 13. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The naughty and the good fix. Do you see? Now, now look, look back at verse 2 in Amos chapter 8. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. Now, our Lord cursed that specific fig tree. But a future restoration of Israel is coming. That particular generation, that particular fig tree. Because if, why did he, he didn't curse all the other fig trees, did he? He just cursed that one, that generation. Symbolic for that generation who should have seen, who should have known, but they didn't. Okay? Like I said, the fig tree is always synonymous with Israel. Okay? And we're, we're going to get a little bit more onto that. But go to Ezekiel now, chapter 7. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7. We're going to read Ezekiel chapter 7 in its entirety. Can you handle that? Huh? Ezekiel chapter 7. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also thou son of man, 
Thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end. The end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense with an S upon thee all thine abominations. So uh, our Lord, God is not done with his people, hence the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, you've got people who like to go to the fig tree and say that God is done with Israel. No, that specific generation, okay, that specific fig tree was cursed. There is going to be a future restoration, obviously, of the Jew, okay? That is coming, okay? That is coming. But right now, they are the enemies of the gospel for our sake. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew, okay? You got to remember that, okay? Let's continue. And mine eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense with an S thy ways upon thee. And thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Which current Israel does not know. They think they do, but they do not. Who is the Lord? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father their promised Messiah, their King, and their God. Thus saith the Lord God, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. The end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it has come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come. The day of trouble is near. And not the sounding again of the mountains. Mm. Mountains you can also liken onto strong, firm, stubborn type people. You can liken that onto there. There's much evidence within the scriptures to suggest that and prove that onto you. But keep that in your mind, okay? Verse 8. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. Hence the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Israel's trouble. Okay? This is the time of the Gentiles. Us Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous, to bring them onto their God. Okay? Through our testimony... Through our testimony, the Gentiles unto them, okay? But this time the Gentiles will end, obviously, with the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away, before the time of Jacob's trouble. Hence, the time of Jacob's trouble, where God will be turning his sole attention back onto his people, the Jew. Let's continue. Verse 9. And mine eyes shall not spare... Neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day. Behold it is come. The morning is gone forth. The rod hath blossomed. Pride hath budded. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. The time has come. The day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. For wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. Remember verse 12. If you take the notes, remember that. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready. But none goeth to the battle. For my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. Hence, 
The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. But, it's this remnant, but they that escape of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, during the time of Jacob's trouble. And, but they shall escape of them, but they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. Remember, remember what we looked at in Luke chapter 18, right? Yeah. Let's continue. All hands shall be feeble. All knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth. And horror shall come, and horror shall cover them. And shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall pass their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Also, and we're going to look at this, um, during the time of Jacob's trouble, gold and silver is not going to be useful for anybody. Okay? Yes, gold and silver is scriptural currency. Yes, but during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's not going to help. Okay? Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he, has set, he, ha, he set it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations, and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. And I will give it into the hands of strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robbers shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. They shall, then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest and counsel from the ancient. Verse 26, also remember when we get to it, will play a very big part, remembering uh, verses 11 and 12. Let's continue, okay? The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts will I judge them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. And right now, like I said, Israel as a nation, as a people, yes, yes, there are those of Israel, of the Jew, who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Amen. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Yes. But as a nation, as a whole, Israel does not know who is the Lord. Hence the time of Jacob's trouble. Now go to Matthew chapter 24. We're going to be referencing Matthew chapter 24 periodically through this video. Matthew chapter 24, verses 14 on to verse 22. 
And this gospel of the kingdom, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, is going to return. It's not going to be the gospel that is preached today. Okay? Why? Because the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to establish the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is works. Okay? Why? Because you're going to be able to see the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You're going to be able to see him. So, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth let him understand. The abomination, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, that man of sin, the son of perdition, which will be released, set forth, let loose, by the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ. He will let loose the son of perdition. Inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? It's the son of perdition, that man of sin. The abomination of desolation, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Stand in the holy place, the third rebuilt temple, which is going to be rebuilt, I believe, during the time of Jacob's trouble. And a lot of people like to argue about that. Um, I believe, as well as a few other the brethren that I'm aware of, they're going to be able to get that temple up in no time flat, boy. During troublous times, when the son of perdition is going forth conquering and to conquer, okay, they're going to be able to build that. During troublous times, they're going to be able to build that thing right quickly. Right quickly. Those of you, who unfortunately, who are going to be left behind, take note of that. Okay? Let's continue. Then let them, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Well, you, you were following me along in Ezekiel chapter 7, right? Yeah? Yeah? Okay? <laughs> Let's continue. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him, not, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, because the Sabbath day will be returning during the time of Jacob's trouble. Today, one does not need to keep the Sabbath to be saved or stay saved. If you're a Jew, you do not need to keep holy the Sabbath today in order to be saved or stay saved. Now, should you as a Jew do that? Sure. But it is not a requirement for your salvation or to stay saved, even if you are a Jew today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Do not forget that, okay? Virtually every heresy that exists today is someone trying to take something from another dispensation and trying to make it applicable for today. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation. There is no the in front of great tribulation. Okay? It's the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. There is no the in front of great tribulation. Okay? For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. 
and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Elect, context here, the Jew, okay? The Jew. And this also debunks this absurd idea that God is done with Israel by twisting the fig tree, okay? The fig tree will blossom again. Once the Jew sees the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, I personally believe that's when they're going to be like, oh, wow. They're going to wake up. And it's so unfortunate that Jewry as a whole has to go through that. It's unfortunate. It is unavoidable. It is inevitable. That's why it is such a precious and special thing that a Jew today is saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Because the time that awaits this world and the Jew. Oh. Now let's read verse 3 in Amos chapter 8. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hosea. Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10. Hosea is right after Daniel if you do not know. Hosea chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 8. Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. A basket of summer fruit. And then he says the end. Uh, uh, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore in verse 2. And here in verse 3, And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Thank you, Father. Let's continue. Their heart is divided. Good and naughty figs. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. For now shall they... For now they shall say, we have no king, because we feared not the Lord. What then should a king do to us? Get a load of that in context to the time of Jacob's trouble. They have spoken words, swearing falsely in making a covenant. Thus judgment springeth up as hemlock in the furrows of the field. The inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Bethlehem. For the people thereof shall mourn over it, and the priests thereof that rejoiced on it, for the glory thereof, because it is departed from it. It shall be also carried on to Assyria for a present to King Jared. Ephraim shall receive shame. And Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. As for Samaria, her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. The high places also of Aven, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars. And they shall say to the mountains, cover us. And to the hills, fall on. Remember this when we get to the last verse of this chapter in Amos chapter uh, 8 here. Remember that. Okay? Remember this. Hinge this. Okay? But now go to Isaiah chapter 1. 
Isaiah chapter 1. You might be saying, that, Brad, what, why, why, why did we read that? Isaiah chapter 1, verses 11 on to verse 20. Okay? Verse 3 in Amos chapter 8. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 11 on to verse 20. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul... Oh, God has a soul. Yeah, you wouldn't say we're made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body. Yeah, just thought I'd mention that, okay? Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear your, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Check this out. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason to said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Amos chapter 8, verses 4 on to verse 6. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small, and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat? James chapter 2. James chapter 2. You have to remember about the book of James. James is a time of Jacob's trouble epistle. Proven to you by the very first verse in James, okay? In James chapter 2, a lot of people have a problem with because it is a contradiction to what Paul says. It is not a contradiction. Why is that? Because this is written to someone else. It is for a different dispensation. This is for the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, there are things within James that cross dispensational lines, Yes, but when it comes to James chapter 2, it's for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. You have to remember that, okay? But James chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 10. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, 
and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. Gay means happy, by the way. Not what these devils have perverted it to mean today. Okay? And say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou here, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? Heirs to the kingdom, the kingdom that will be coming when the Lord comes back at his second coming, see. But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Very applicable unto the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to be selling people out, snitching on people that don't have the mark. Because these people who take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble, their mind is going to be alienated from the Lord. I believe that, and we're seeing the uh, building up, the, uh, uh, what is it, the prologue, I guess you would say, onto that what's with what is going on today. Okay? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well, but if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. And now go to James chapter five, verses one on to verse six. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Remember about the gold that we read about in Ezekiel? Remember that? Your gold and silver is cankered. Again, during the time of Jacob's trouble, dear friends, for those of you who are going to be left behind to face that horrific time period that, you're, that our minds can't even begin to imagine, okay? Gold and silver is going to avail you nothing. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Because they, they, you know, gold and silver, gold and silver, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be useless. Okay? It's going to be useless. And, okay, your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And ye and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nursed your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. And then, of course, you would continue reading about patiently waiting for the coming of their Lord during the time of Jacob's trouble, the second coming. Okay? Now, go to Proverbs chapter 11. So you got to remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, that man of sin, this son of perdition, is going to be controlled controlling everything. He's going to be allowed to be controlling everything. Everybody is going to either, if they want to buy or sell, they're going to either have to take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So someone who has gold and silver during that time, when the mark is implemented, okay? Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 6. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Look at this, verse 5 in Amos chapter 8. 
saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit? When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Verse 3 in Proverbs chapter 11. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. Uh, look at verse 5 in Amos chapter 8. Talk about an of uh, talk of integrity, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think so. Let's continue. Verse 3 in Proverbs 11. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Keep this in mind for the time of Jacob's trouble. Those who take the mark, the perverseness of transgressors shall what? Destroy them? And again, another thing about riches during the time of Jacob's trouble. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. But righteousness delivereth from death. Yeah, yeah. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Remember the two baskets of figs? One good, the other naughty? <laughs> You're getting this, right? Yeah? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Okay? Isaiah chapter 58. We're going to read this whole chapter. I hope you can handle it. Okay? Now let's refresh our memories. Verses 4 and verse 6 in Amos chapter 8. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone? that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and, sh and the shuffle, shekel bleh, great, and falsifying the balances by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. Isaiah chapter 58. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Not every one who saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Anybody, huh? Yeah, yeah, let's continue. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. Look at me, look at me, look at how righteous I am by doing this. And to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. And remember what we looked at in Luke chapter 18 already? Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it, is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, 
incidentally, one of the things that my wife and I are praying about, uh, we got to start, we got to move, okay? Um, we, we don't have to, but we are seeking to move. We hope to that the Lord will give on to us a place where we can lodge brethren to come stay with us and uh, come visit. But anyway, anyway, sorry for that little wabbit trail. I, I like wabbit, but sorry, sorry. Let's reread that. I apologize for that. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be your re reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. Again, keep in mind, when jewelry during the time of Jacob's trouble I believe when they see the son of perdition standing in the rebuilt temple saying, I'm God. That's what I personally believe. Okay. And if thou, dry out, if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. Remember in the book of Hebrews where it says, forsake not the gathering of thyselves together. During the time of Jacob's trouble, those Jews who have who get it, who are like, whoa, all those authorized version of the scripture believers, the church of the living God, they were the ones telling us the truth all along. Once they get it and um, understand, it's like, wow, what's going on? They're going to have to, you know, together. Those that fear the Lord, as it says later on in Amos, uh, thought one... Um, those who feared the Lord thought often one of uh, another upon his name, and the Lord heard it, and a book of remembrance was written. Okay, But during that time, those Jews who understand, who see the truth, they're going to be gathering together, hiding from that, that man of sin, the son of perdition. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Hosea chapter 12. Hosea chapter 12. Hosea again is right after Daniel. Hosea chapter 12. Again, we're going to read this whole chapter. Hopefully you can handle that. Okay? Ephraim feedeth on wind and followeth after the east wind. He daily increaseth lies and desolation, and they do make a covenant with the Assyrian, and oil is carried into Egypt. The Lord hath also a controversy with Judah, and will punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his doings, will he recompense him. With an S. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. 
he wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. Even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. Therefore turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually. He is a merchant. The balances of deceit are in his hand. He loveth to oppress. And Ephraim said, Yet I am become rich. I have found me out substance and all my labors. They shall find none iniquity in me that were sin. And that and I that am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt will yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles. As in the days of the solemn feast. And remember, uh, during the kingdom of heaven, all nations have to go up and worship the king during the time, uh, Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, keep that in mind for the kingdom of heaven after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Is there iniquity in Gilead? Surely they are vanity. They sacrifice bullocks in Gilgal. Yea, their altars are as heaps in the furrows of the field. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria, and Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Ephraim provoketh him to anger most bitterly. Therefore shall he leave his blood upon him, and his reproach shall his Lord return unto him. Malachi chapter 1. Malachi chapter 1. Malachi chapter 1. Verse 7 on to verse 14. And again, Amos chapter uh, 8 verses 4 on to verse 6. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone? that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. Malachi chapter 1, verses 7, under verse 14. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? And that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifices, sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? And now I pray you, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts? Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do ye kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. Again, think about this during the time of Jacob's trouble. When the Jews are going to be offering their sacrificial offerings, as in the Old Testament, okay, for a little while. The son of perdition is going to allow them to do that in the rebuilt temple. Okay? And from the rising of the sun even to unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye have profaned it, in that ye say, The table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof... Even his meat is contemptible. Ye said also, Behold, what a weariness is it! And ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And ye brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus ye brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth, and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Ooh. Now, let's continue. Verse 7 in Amos chapter 8. 
The Lord has sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Isaiah chapter 43. Oh, no, no, no. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 21 first. Let's start with Ezekiel chapter 21. Ezekiel chapter 21, verses 24 under verse 27. Ezekiel chapter 21, verses 24 under verse 27. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have made your iniquity to be remembered, in that your transgressions are discovered, so that in all your doings your sins do appear, because I say that ye are come to that ye are come to remembrance, ye shall be taken with the hand, and now, profane wicked prince of Israel, whose day is come when iniquity shall have an end. Iniquity shall have an end. Thus said the Lord God, remove the diadem. And take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low. And abase him that is high. I will overturn. Overturn. Overturn it. And it shall be no more. Until he come. Whose right it is. And I will give it. Him. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 15 on to verse 28. Whose right it is? I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel. Isaiah 43, verses 15 on to the close of the chapter. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power, they shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall shew forth my praise. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money. Neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I, even I am he that blotteth, blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake. And will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. By thy words thou shalt be justified. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Different dispensation. Remember. During the time of Jacob's trouble. It's faith and works. Okay. But during the kingdom of heaven. It's all works mind okay thy first teacher thy first father excuse me has sinned and thy teachers have transgressed against me therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary and have given Jacob to the curse and Israel to approaches okay now verse 8 in uh, Amos chapter 8 Shall not the land tremble for this, and everyone mourn that dwelleth therein? 
and it shall rise up holy as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. Shall not the land tremble for this? Check this out. Check this out. Go to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. Verses 17 on to verse 21. Revelation chapter 16. Verses 17 on to verse 21. And he gathered them together into a place called... Oh, excuse me. Verse 17. And the, angel, and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not seen since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. Uh, verse 18 there in Revelation chapter 16 is talking about, obviously, such an earthquake that has never, ever happened before or never will happen since, okay? Now, there have been earthquakes and there will be earthquakes in divers places that our Lord tells us about in Matthew chapter 24. But this, a great earthquake, so mighty an earthquake and so great, Never the like of an earthquake, as being described in verse 18 in Revelation chapter 16. Shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up holy as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned, as by the flood of Egypt. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and... Great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon man a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. And also, too, keep in mind where it says in Revelation chapter 12, verses 13 on to verse 17, where the dragon cast out a flood out of his mouth to pursue the woman, Israel. And you also got to remember in Revelation 17, verse 15, that the waters on where the beast uh, sitteth are peoples. Found that very, very interesting. Found that very, very interesting. Now, verses 9 on to verse 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Sun to go down at noon. Sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day. Now, during the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes, yes, that happened. But I'd like us to consider this. Go now to Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Oops. Amos chapter 5. Check this out. Amos chapter 5 verses 16 on to verse 27. Amos chapter 5 verses 16 on to verse 27. Therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord saith thus, Wailing shall be in all streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas. And they shall call the husbandmen to mourning, and such as are skillful of lamentation to wailing. 
and in all vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand upon on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast days. I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. This plays in with verses 5 on to verse uh, 6 again. But let's keep reading. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vowels, vials. But let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, and Shuin, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves, the star of your God. You know, the seal of Solomon, Very, uh, you know, the sign of the Masons, the true flag of Israel is the flag of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, not the seal of Solomon. Okay? Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Now, go to Joel. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. One second, brethren. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verses 1 unto verse 11. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pain, and all faces shall gather blackness. I'm talking about the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with us, coming with him. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their, their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. It's coming back at, with, at the second coming. For the camp is very great. For he is strong which executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Oh boy, huh? Yeah? <laughs> and that, yeah, amen? Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. 
Zechariah chapter 12. Let's refresh our memories. Verses 9 and 10 in Amos chapter 8. And it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will cause, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up, and I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as in, a, and I will make it as the morning of an only son, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Zechariah chapter 12, verses 10 under verse 14. Ah, let's read verses 9 under verse 14. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Now hold up. Think about this. The Jewish people that go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Midway, I believe, when uh, the son of perdition goes into the rebuilt temple saying, I am God, and Jewry, that remnant, will get it. When they see, finally, when they see our Lord coming back at his second coming with us, okay, when, he, when they see that, and those who took the mark, they're going to see them. What does that say? And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Every eye is going to see the Lord come back at his second coming. And these Jewish people who during the time of Jacob's trouble turn onto their Lord when they finally see they and realizing that all along he was who he said he was. What mourning that's going to cause. Because look at this. In verse 11. In that day shall there be great mourning in Jerusalem. As the mourning of Hadad Rimon. In the valley of Megadon. And the land shall mourn every family apart. The family of the house of David apart. And their wives apart. The family of the house of Nathan apart. And their wives apart. The family of the house of Levi apart. And their wives apart. The family of Shimei apart and their wives apart. All the families that remain. All the families that remain. Every family apart and their wives apart. Knowing that. Well. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Verses 29. Under verse 42. Matthew chapter 20, uh, 24. Verses 29 under verse 42. See how we did that by the way. Okay. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Shall the sun be darkened. And the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of heaven. Of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet. That's us. Okay? Because remember, we will be likened unto angels. And those of us who are redeemed... Okay, before the time of Jacob's trouble, we come back with him. We are as the angels of heaven. Okay, so these angels, that's us. The church of the living God that he sends out. Okay. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, the Jews, from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. 
Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Now remember, keep this in mind. We already looked at the uh, of the fig tree, okay? That fig tree was cursed, no fruit. But after the time of Jacob's trouble, when he comes back, his second coming, okay? When jewelry gets it during the time of Jacob's trouble, guess what? That fig tree is going to sprout again. Because they finally are going to Believe on their God. Okay? As a whole. The remnant, that is. Okay? Well, let's continue. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth his leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation, the one that he is speaking about in context, shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Remember that. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. See, those that take the mark. Okay, and those that get it, okay, that ties in with James and what we already looked at in verses 4 on to verse 6, okay? But there's going to be that remnant that are going to get it of jewelry, okay? Verse 40, then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Okay? Now, now the big one. <laughs> now this, what we have looked at as pertaining unto the time of Jacob's trouble, verses 11 and on to verse 12. Verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. Now, there are those, say, of the MacArthur crowd, say, well, look at this and say that that famine is talking about the 430 plus years of silence from Malachi on to John the Baptist, okay? But in the context of what we have been looking at so far, no, no. Because what did our Lord say? You know, in the parable of Lazarus, he, saw, he said unto them, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And also our Lord says about um if you hear not Moses' words, how shall you believe my words? Okay? Okay? This is not talking about that time of silence between Malachi on to John the Baptist. No, that's not talking about this. This is a time future. Now, this is kind of, kind of relevant for us today. Kind of. Okay? The Word of God is available, the authorized version of the Scriptures, okay? The Church of the Living God, the Body of Christ, is here on the earth, okay? So, one can hear the Word of the Lord today through someone speaking through the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit speaking through the Scriptures, okay? 
But what has happened is Satan, through Roman Catholicism and the Jesuit order, have tried to counterfeit the scriptures and have given you all kinds of Bibles that contradict. Okay? So, getting this close to the redemption of the purchased possession, yes, the scriptures are available and the scriptures will be available also during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But see, in a way, behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor thirst of water, but of hearing of the words of Lord of the Lord. In church buildings in modern Christendom, most people have rejected the word of the Lord and go for the Bibles. Okay? They reject the scriptures and go for a Bible. The yea hath God said, they have fallen for the ploy of the Jesuit, Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, okay, with their Jesuitical textual criticism. So in a way, in a way, only in a way, uh, what is being promulgated by the John MacArthur types and through people that go to these church buildings, okay, they're not getting the scriptures. They're not hearing the words of the Lord. No, they are hearing the word of a Bible given to them by Rome through Jesuitical textual criticism. Yea, hath God said. So in that way, in a way, yes, kind of. But the fulfillment of this, the fulfillment of this, Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Okay? The fulfillment of this will be in the time of Jacob's trouble. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8 on to verse 17. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8 on to verse 17. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time for the time to come forever and ever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Anyone um, uh, take away from the words of the book of this prophecy? Okay? The authorized version of the scriptures will be available during the time of Jacob's trouble. But what is going to be so different about that time? The church of the living God is not going to be on the earth. God is omnipresent, okay? People always like to say, well, it's the Holy Ghost. Well, no, it's not. It's not the Holy Ghost that gets taken away. No, it's the church of the living God, the body of Christ, that gets taken away. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay, it is the church of the living God, the body of Christ, that gets taken out of the way. Okay, but the scriptures are going to be there. You got to remember that. But that famine. Now go write it before them in a table. Uh, Isaiah chapter 30, uh, verses, uh, what is it, 8 on verse 17. And note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children which will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Get you out to the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us, Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, Because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, 
so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a sherd to take fire from the hearth or to take water with all out of the pit. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. He would not. But ye said, No, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. One shall f one thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, and as an ensign on a hill. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. And once the redemption of the purchased possession happens, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, our Lord's ambassadors, okay, with the word of, with the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation, okay, once we are taken out of the way, that, the church of the living God, the presence there, it's not going to be there. They're going to be left with all these fakes if they survive, okay? All these fakes, okay? So hearing of the word of the Lord during the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be very precious. It's going to be a famine during that time period. But now let's look at verse 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. Now, in a way for today, people are, you know, they run to and fro, meaning that many Greek manuscripts, they go to the Greek, right? They're trying to find new things, that kind of stuff. They shall, and they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. You got to go to the Greek. You got to go to the Hebrew. Which edition of the Nestalon? Which edition of the Septuagint? Okay, that kind of thing. Okay, they go to and fro to try to find the word of the Lord. But yet for today, here it is. Here it is. The complete. Perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. Yes, but, okay, yes, that you can kind of, that can, you can kind of make comparisons, I have, with that, but the fulfillment of that, of verse 12, okay, Isaiah chapter 29, Isaiah chapter 29. Now remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the church of the living God is not going to be there. Eternal security, the indwelling permanently of the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit is not going to be there. Eternal security, except for the 144,000 Jews. Other than that, eternal security is not there in the time of Jacob's trouble. You can very well lose salvation during that time. Okay, it is not like today where you, the spirit of truth will be permanently sealed within that uh, individual during the time of Jacob's trouble who will guide you into all truth. You have to remember that. Okay, eternal security is not available during the time of Jacob's trouble. For the 144,000 sealed Jews, yes. But otherwise, brother, no. And so you got people today trying to tell you that it will be like that during the time of Jacob's trouble. And they're saying that to you so you will take the mark of the beast and be damned to go to hell. That's the only reason why they're saying that kind of stuff. Okay? Those people work for the Jesuit order, by the way. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 9 on to verse 16. Check this out. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye, cry ye out and cry. 
They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon, the, upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught, by the precept of men. Oh, yeah. And today, a Pharisee is someone who elevates tradition over the scriptures. Uh, that's Catholic. That's Catholic. The Catholic is the worst enemy of all man, especially to the Jew. Okay? Therefore, verse 14 in Isaiah chapter 29, Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Surely you're turning... A of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he hath no understanding? Is it not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest? Should have just read to 16, but we read to verse 17, okay? But Go now to Matthew chapter 24 again. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Verses 23 on to verse 26. See how we did that? Matthew chapter 24, verses 23 on to verse 26. Then if any man say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, false anointed ones, and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Again, in context, Matthew 24, for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Behold, I have told you before, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Let's read verses 27 on to verse 28. For as, the, for as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. See, people like to talk about the, uh, these heretics, um, replacement theology types, Catholics, like to, when uh, we'll go to the fig tree again and say, God is totally done with Israel. What do you do with Romans chapter 11? <laughs> they like to twist this saying that it's about, you know, it's actually talking about the church. But no. Romans chapter 11, verses 7, under verse 12. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Now, election in this context, okay? The election. Those who are of the church of the living God. Remember, the Pauline epistles are specific doctrine for the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation. 
So when he says elect there, he is talking about those who are of the church of the living God. You can prove that if you were to read the entire chapter. Okay? The context, the context here of elect is those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. We're Gentiles, okay? Remember that. Elect is defined by the context. Oh, that it appears in. Yes. Let's continue. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day, as we have already looked at. And David said, let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Hence... Gentiles are grafted into the tree of the Jew to what? To make the Jew jealous. God is hardly, is not as hardly done with the Jew. The fig tree again is synonymous with that specific generation. Okay? But Israel will sprout again. That fig tree will sprout again. God. Verse 12, in uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 12. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? How much more their fullness? The kingdom of heaven. When jewelry... Read Psalm 102 on your own time on this, okay? When Jewry will come to accept their Lord, their King, their Savior, their God, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that that remnant is going to do that, like I've said to you now several times in this video, is going to do that when the son of perdition goes into the rebuilt temple. It's like, I'm God, here I am. Okay? That's what I personally believe. But right here. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? How much more their fullness but life from the dead? The valley of dry bones, anyone? What is that? Ezekiel chapter 37? Now go, uh, now where were we? Now go to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 13. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them which worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. That's three and a half years. Okay? I think that is. I think that is. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. Remember the transfiguration. It's Moses and Elijah. Okay? It's Moses and Elijah. Some like to say that it's going to be Enoch. No, it's Moses and Elijah. Let's prove this. Okay? And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days. 
clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth, before the God of the earth. And if any man will, will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must, be, he must in this manner be killed. Now right here. And they have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their, pos, of their prophecy, Elisha, and have power over the waters to turn them to blood, Moses. And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Moses. Okay? So, these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, Elijah. And also to uh, verse 5, if any man hurt will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. Where uh, Elijah sat on the hills, like, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thy fifty with thy fifty. Okay, he commanded fire to come down from heaven, fire coming out of their mouth. Elijah, okay. The, verse 6, these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the day of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. Moses. It's Moses and Elijah, okay? We today, the Church of the Living God, we don't need Moses and Elijah. The Jews who require a sign, they do. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where was our Lord crucified? That, that's a rhetorical question. You, you know that. And they, of the, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Now, how are they going to see their bodies? Are they all going to flock there to see that? No. Or are they going to see them over the internet, over televisions, over a live stream, or whatever? And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Kind of like Christ Mass. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Tormented. When you speak the word of the Lord, Church of the Living God, um, be it known unto the lost people, form of torment unto them, isn't it? Oh, and those of you that have been used of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, outside your door to witness unto people through the scriptures, you know that firsthand, don't you? Yeah, let's continue. Verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon all them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven, up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. Gave glory to the God of heaven. Now, Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter four. Hopefully we can finish this whole chapter. For behold, the day cometh 
that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness, S-U-N, and that's a capital S, the Son of Righteousness, arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So remember Moses, one of the two witnesses, and Elijah himself. Okay, and I have a video uh, addressing this question about the spirit of Elijah. Okay, but and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. Okay? Moses and Elijah are the two witnesses. Okay? Now, when the son of perdition goes into the third temple, I, I'm going to, be, I believe it's midway but somewhere around that time, the, um, the two witnesses are going to be in there as well, okay? To do what? And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Okay? Now. <laughs> now. Let's read verse 13 in Amos chapter 8. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Charismatics who do not rightly divide the word of truth, who are basically Catholic themselves, wicked um, replacement theology I like to say that the latter rain is for today but it's uh, always talking about future restoration for the Jews for Israel okay but Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 under verse 13 then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins ten virgins and those are the serpent seed doctrine like to take this and say about the ten virgins with the disper whatever. Just just thought I'd mention that. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Wise, fearing the Lord, foolish, fool has said in his heart there is no God. Good and naughty figs. Yeah? They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Hence, meaning that they're going to um, endure to the end, while the foolish, good and evil, uh, good and naughty figs, okay? While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgin, virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But, they answer, but, they, but the wise answered, Excuse me, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. 
And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And verse 13 shows you to what this parable is referring to. During the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The good and naughty figs. Those, the good figs, which come to believe on their Lord Jesus Christ. Don't take that mark. And that other, the foolish, not enduring to the end. See? In that day the fair virgins and young men, in that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Interesting, isn't it? But now verse 14. They that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manor of Beersheba liveth, and they shall fall and never rise up again. Go to 1 Kings chapter 12. We're almost done. 1 Kings chapter 12. Now, we've got to remember, at the writing of 1 Kings at this time, there were two, there was divisions. There was the northern kingdom and the lower kingdom, Judah and the other kingdoms up there, okay? Judah and Benjamin, I believe it was, uh, in the one uh, southern kingdom. And the northern kingdom, the ten tribes. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So it says, thy God, O Dan. Dan was associated with the northern tribes. Samaria, the northern tribe. The northern tribes, okay? The northern kingdom, okay? The southern kingdom, where Jerusalem was, the northern kingdom, okay? The two kingdoms that were um, uh, divided, okay? 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 26, on to the close of the chapter. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam king of Judah. And they shall kill me, and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel, and made two calves of gold, and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem, Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Israel, of Egypt. Excuse me. Now note this, verse 29. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. Bethel. Where was that? In Samaria. Where was Samaria? The northern kingdom. Dan. Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manor of Beersheba liveth. Even they shall fall and never rise again. Verse uh, 14 again. They that swear by the sin of Samaria, Bethel, and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth. Verse 30. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made an house of high places, and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. And Jeroboam, Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priests 
of the high places which he had made. So what are we seeing? A counterfeit, an imitation. Yes, 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 I will be like the Most High. The son of perdition will come uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Our Lord is going to release him. He's going to be a counterfeit. He is going to say, I am God, okay? A counterfeit. See that? See that? Verse 33, so he offered upon the altar which he made in Bethel the 15th day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart. And ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. Okay? They that swear by the sin of Samaria, by the sin of perdition, by that fake, false system. Okay? Good figs and the naughty figs, remember? Okay? Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I, I bet you was wondering when we were going to at least touch on this, right? Right? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians. Come on, fingers, work with me. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand, second coming. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, falling away, and I, I wholeheartedly believe that the falling away there is talking about those who said they were of us, were revealed not to be of us, okay? That's what I believe the falling away is, that those who say that they are saved of the church and living God as we grow closer to the redemption of the purchased possession, that those guys who say they, that they are of the church of the living God, they're going to be revealed as fake. That's what I believe the um, uh, falling away is talking about. Okay? Yes, those who are saved of the church of the living God, yes, they can get involved and mess up. Yes, but I, I believe that this falling away is talking about those who say they are of us. But they ain't never was of us, see. That's what I believe. Okay. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin, the son, and, except the, and that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay, let's read that again. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall... That day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God shewing himself that he is God. Shewing himself that he is God. The abomination that maketh desolate, okay? That man of sin, son of perdition, the rebuilt temple, going in, saying, here I am, okay? Now go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Now, the mark of the beast, okay? The mark of the beast which comes after the two witnesses. Isn't that something, huh? The two witnesses are going to witness and turn the hearts of the fathers onto the children and the children onto the fathers. Somewhere within this, okay? Somewhere within this, 
son of perdition going into the rebuilt temple saying, I am God. Okay. I do not believe that the mark of the beast is going to be instantaneously instituted after the redemption of the purchased possession because the son of perdition has to go forth conquering and to conquer to totally obliterate all the economies. Okay. But you got to remember, and this is being prepared for today. They are preparing you that are going to be left behind for this coming event. Okay? They are preparing you for this right now for, to take the mark of the beast. Okay? Revelation 13, verses 16 on to the close of the chapter. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6, 666. Now, let's read Revelation 14, verses 9 on to verse 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, Okay, you're doing all that when you receive the mark in your forehead or in your hand. Okay, it's not a one, two, three, and you can get out of it. No, no, no. Let's keep reading. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented, tormented, not soul annihilationism, but tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, whoso who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Whosoever. Anybody. If anybody received the mark of the beast, in his hand or in his forehead, you're damned. Smoke of the torment goeth up forever and ever. Okay? You're damned. You're going to hell like a fire. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Okay? And verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and... The faith of Jesus. Commandments. Faith and works. During the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? So. During the time of Jacob's trouble. You take the mark of the beast. You are going to hell. There's no. You can't lop off your hand. Gouge it out of your forehead. No. Once you get it. You're done. Okay? You're up the creek, as they like to say. There's nothing you can do. And plus, you got to remember, God says right there, says right there, you take that, you're done. And again, people, those out there today who are non-dispensational, but claim to be dispensational, okay? Easy believism. They want you to not be part of the church of the living God, to be redeemed, to take, be taken out of the way before the time of Jacob's trouble. But they are telling you all these lies so that you get left behind and during the time of Jacob's trouble, you will take that mark of the beast. Because what are they telling you? Just believe, just believe, just believe. No scriptural repentance, no brokenness, no contrition, no fear of the Lord. Okay? They are against calling upon the name of the Lord, which is something that just comes upon being broken of your self-righteousness and having sorrow and fearing the Lord. It just comes. Okay? They preach against that. Why? So that you believe that you're saving yourself 
by our own belief. And then once the redemption of the purchased possession happens and we get taken out of the way, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, the church and living God, the body of Christ. And then after the redemption of the purchased possession, and then shall that wicked be revealed, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay. They're telling you all this so that when it comes to that, to this, you're going to be there thinking, I'm saved just by my belief. Just believe. And you're eternally secure. And you take that mark of the beast and you're done. See. And you're done. And see, the mark of the beast shows us what? That no man will be able to buy or sell. Your gold and silver that so many of you are hoarding right now thinking that, you know, you're not saved, okay? Or thinking that you've got to go through the great tribulation. It's the, the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? You are. You are going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. And all your gold and your silver is not going to, is going to do nothing for you. Because the mark of the beast. And hence, there will be a famine in the land. Because once you take that mark of the beast, number one, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. But I believe that there is going to be something within that mark of the beast, how it's injected, okay, that is going to do something to the individual's brain or whatever to permanently alienate them from the Lord, okay? I don't for one second buy that the removal of the God gene was a hoax. I do believe that that's, that technology or whatever will be perfected before, you know, before they give the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? I personally believe that, well, number one, we just saw it. You take the mark of the beast, psh, you're done. No ifs, ands, or buts. But I, I also believe that there's going to be something within the mark of the beast that is going to make your mind so alienated from the Lord to begin with. Hence, why you're doomed to hell. And hence, like I said, the church of the living God is not going to be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Hence, the fulfillment of Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12 will be in its fulfillment because the church of the living God is not going to be there. The, the scriptures are going to be there. The scriptures, absolutely. You know, heaven and, earth will heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Okay? So. Anyway, <laughs> that's going to be it for this video. Okay? Please, if you make it through this whole video, do not for a second fall for these Jesuit coadjutors who tell you just believe. Okay? You, you come to the Lord on his terms. Okay? On his terms. Not your own belief. Okay? Yes, belief is part of it. Yes. Yes. But no brokenness or contrition. The Lord's terms. See, they're doing this so that when you're left behind, you're going to take that mark and you're going to be done. And don't for a second think that God is done with Israel, the Jew. He is the, the Jew is the apple of God's eye. So, that is going to be it for this video, dear brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Um, Lord willing, <laughs> hopefully, um, you might, some, something, the Lord be magnified. Lord be magnified. But also, too, I want to just mention all, on to all of you, um, please keep us in your prayers. We pray for so many of you, but uh, please keep us in your prayers. Um, we have to give um, a decision 
onto this whatever where we live by uh, before July 1st, whether we are going to stay or go. Um, we live in Illinois, and Illinois is outrageously corrupt and overpriced. And where we live, oh, oh, the Lord brought us here for a reason. The Lord has taught my wife and I how to solely depend on him alone. He took all things out of the way for us that we made, that we had no choice but to trust on him that he will provide for his own. And he has through the church of the living God. And thank you so much for all, for all you have given and for all you have done for us. Praise the Lord. But uh, please keep us in your prayers because what we would like to do is find a cheap house out of Illinois where we could have brethren come and visit us, stay with us for a couple days. Someone who needs to get out of somewhere, come and live with us, um, whatever that may be. Um, but that is what we would personally like, somewhere cheaper than Illinois. But the Lord's will be done. So please keep us in your prayers, brethren, sisters, that the Lord's will be done. Whether he wants us to stay here, which neither my wife or I want, but his will be done. His will be done. So please keep us in your prayers. Um, we, there, we don't want much. We don't want much. We don't want to own anything. Because when America collapses... What good is owning something going to do for you? Okay. So, anyway, we love you. Thank you so much, each and every single one of you, for all you have done, given, and for your prayers. Um, also, to thank you to our one brother. Um, thank you for that video. I have not watched the whole thing yet. Getting there. <laughs> Getting there, very interesting. And um, yeah, don't forget to pray for one another, okay? So, it's going to be it for this video. I love you. We will see you in the next video, okay?